Are you ready for schools to reopen? Remember, we are still in a pandemic. Protesting figures means we cannot say if we've reached our peak. And monitoring the trend of this pandemic has been very difficult for the government. So I ask again, are we ready for schools to reopen in the nation's capital? It's easy to put on a brave face when the cameras are watching. But what happens when the lights go down? Can the Federal Capital Territory Administration ensure, one, that the necessary infrastructure needed to keep children safe from COVID-19 while in school will be delivered by schools across the FCT? And two, can the checks to ensure compliance across board be maintained in the long run? All these and more coming up this week on Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. So many questions. What term are the students resuming on? Many private schools have already conducted third-term exams online. How will the public schools catch up? How do we balance the school calendar? In maintaining social distancing in the classroom, are the schools going to run shifts? And are the same teachers going to handle both shifts? Speaking of teachers, are they able to handle the extra responsibility? And to be honest, it's a new world with new realities. Are teachers equipped to adjust to the new classroom rules? We'll address all these and more in the interview segment, but... Let's get to our feature story. The Federal Capital Territory is set to reopen schools on the 11th of October. Our story looks at the level of preparedness of the schools and the thoughts of parents, students and teachers on the plans to keep children safe while they go to school. The Federal Capital Territory is one of the subnationals that did not resume academic activities in the third phase of the easing of lockdown in the country. Hello, sir. How are you? However, it was only a matter of time before the federal government made the announcement to reopen federal schools. After our consultation with the Presidential Committee on COVID-19, we have decided that all our 104 unity schools should open on the 12th of October 2020. States and private owners will work out the modalities for the opening of schools under their purview. Gentlemen of the press, as we all work towards the opening of learning institutions nationwide, I strongly urge school owners to put in place systems that meet the following conditions. There should be procedures for self-distancing as much as possible and in as many situations as is practicable. Develop and display at schools simple context-specific reference protocols on day-to-day -day actions to be operated in each school. Conduct risk assessment with a view to understanding the gaps in the system that can increase the risk of transmission and make recommendations for addressing this. There should be safety and hygiene in all stages and all phases of the school opening process. Something like self distancing, frequent hand washing, use of face masks, and so on. There should be sensitization and monitoring procedures while all this are going on. Uh, let me warn that any school owner who does not comply with these guidelines and an outbreak occurs in the school due to negligence, the risk closure of their schools. I'm very pleased to say that based on the reality on ground, as well as the input and advice of medical personnel, and the guidance and guidelines of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, as well as the releases from the Federal Ministry of Education, we have come to the conclusion that it is relatively safe for us to open up the schools in the FCT. Therefore, the FCT administration hereby wish to inform, inform the general public of the reopening of all schools within the Federal Capital Territory from Sunday, 11th October 2020. Boarding students will resume on 11th October, which is a Sunday, while day students will resume on Monday, 12th October. 2020. But you agree with me that the gathering of children and young people within a closed environment 
pose very peculiar challenges that require handling with utmost care and caution, particularly by you, our school and education administrators. The schools have been shut down for over seven months and ahead of the full resumption of academic activities, schools in the Federal Capital Territory are making final arrangements. Cutting the grasses, cleaning the classrooms and fumigating school premises are some of the arrangements being put in place for the expanded reopening of schools. In abidance to the instant rules of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we want to ensure that there is adequate safety and um, care for our children and our returnees to school. So we are fumigating, we are just this symbolic, the whole schools in the Federal Capital Territory simultaneously will be getting fumigated until Monday for the, and ready for the resumption. The administration set up a committee and there is the management team, there is also a team and a leader in charge of the quality assurance that have been making sure that the schools do the right thing and the preparatives and owners of schools are doing the right thing. And most of them, according from the last meeting we had with them, had already, you know, uh, complied. And for anyone wanting also, or any school that is found wanting, there are standards for disciplinary actions that will be made. Very prepared, as you can see for yourself. We are perfectly prepared because we, are, we have on the grass court already. The fumigation is going on. We have our wash hand basins, our sanitizer, our liquid soap, our face mask. Everything is on ground. So we are really prepared. According to the Federal Ministry of Education, some of the key guidelines for schools to reopen include safe distancing in classrooms, dining halls, staff rooms, and office spaces. Furthermore, the FCT administration has issued 17 guidelines for the expanded reopening of schools. These include training and sensitization of school personnel on safety measures against the spread of COVID-19, provision of infrared thermometers for taking body temperature of everybody at the entrance gate, staff rooms and classrooms, provision of hand sanitizers, liquid soap and hand washing devices with running water, provision of reusable face shield, face masks for teachers and students. Suspension of all activities that encourage crowding and clustering in school. Maximum class size should be 25 students per class. Surface of dining tables are to be disinfected before and after every meal for boarding schools. Bed spacing of two meters apart and no two students on one double bunk bed. Provision of sick bay for any student with high temperature. Students with underlying medical conditions should come with a medical report. Suspension of school bus services for now. And where parents insist, the school must ensure adequate social distancing in the bus. The FCT administration has made the necessary arrangements for strict adherence to these guidelines. In reopening, expanding the reopening to other levels of uh, academic activities, we did not, we will not reinvent the wheel. Uh, based on the experience in Ghana, a directive was given that we should not engage in extensive procurement activities. Rather, grants should be provided in the of schools and on the head of those schools to provide most of the basic requirements for the schools. The details have been provided and the, the head of the schools have been briefed on what are expected of them. We have, we have established uh, a set of guidelines that is measurable and can be followed up for purposes of monitoring. If you have to do this, you want to see the one we come All are targeted to ensure a safe environment for our children. In virtually all our schools, we have clinics, and um, these clinics are manned and um, adequate uh, non, -pharmaceutical, uh, uh, non pharmaceutical materials also. Uh, available in our schools. Uh, when we have cases that we suspect immediately, uh, such cases will be linked up to the Department of um, Public Health for uh, urgent uh, uh, intervention. Uh, that arrangement has already been put in place. The students are expected to resume the first term of the 2020-2021 academic session. However, 
The calendar provides two weeks for revision and completion of pending second term examinations. The continuous assessment for the first and second term will be used alongside the examinations to determine their placement in the new session. The schools are not expected to run the previous term. The academic calendar is expected to end on Friday, December 18, 2020. No private school should do tour term. We gave a guideline. We gave them guidelines concerning how what we define as virtual learning, and we were monitoring them. And we kept telling them, particularly I know this does not apply to public schools, that no school should go into tour term, and no charges. We must not charge parents for tour term. So far, the parents of the as part of efforts to ensure the strict compliance to the COVID-19 guidelines in schools, the Ministry of Environment is deploying 60,000 environmental health emergency volunteers to schools across the country, including the FCT. 60,000 environmental health volunteers will be working with other stakeholders at the subnational level in accordance with the guidelines for the safe opening of schools. The roles of the environment uh, sector generally and specifically uh, that of the environmental health practitioners includes participating in developing detailed protocols established and maintaining prescribed hygiene standards and practices including water, sanitation and hygiene, that is wash provisions, additional measures of temperature checks and screening, hand hygiene, access to adequate gender segregated toilet facilities, adequately ventilated classrooms and hostels accommodation. Uh, though it's a continuous process, uh, provided there is uh, COVID-19, the environmental health volunteers are going to continue mounting uh, the surveillance decks and also making sure that the protocol guideline issued by the PTF is adhered to by all learning centers or learning institutions in the country. So it's a continuous process. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control is also mandating schools to carry out weekly risk assessments, while states and local governments are to conduct monthly and quarterly risk assessments as the schools resume fully. The center plans to intensify public enlightenment on measures to reduce the risk of transmission of COVID-19, while pleading with parents and guardians to complement the administration's efforts by further creating awareness and sensitizing their wards on the need to adhere strictly to health and safety measures as stipulated by the relevant health authorities. The first phase development of the FCT has five districts. They are the Central Business District, Meitama, Wuse, Garki, and Asokoro. Whereas Asokoro, Garki, Wuse, and Meitama are mainly residential districts, the Central Business District is strictly businesses and government offices. The central area also hosts the Three Arms Zone, which is fashioned after Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., where the U.S. Congress, the Supreme Court, and the White House are within a short distance of each other. In Abuja, the zone consists of the Presidential Villa, the National Assembly, and the Supreme Court, all surrounded by a ring road. Our guest is Hajia Fatima Abdurrahman, a teacher and the chairperson of the FCT School Reopening Committee. She was quite optimistic months ago when a few classes were asked to reopen for exams. Sadly, we were unable to get her to speak to us despite several calls and postponements on the new guidelines for full resumption of schools. 
However, we did speak to her some time ago in the infrastructure put in place by the FCT administration in preparation for this total reopening of schools in the FCT, as well as plans to ensure compliance to COVID-19 guidelines by schools. We also caught up with her during the week, giving out the guidelines for total school resumption in the FCT. Thank you so much, Hadia Fatima Abdurrahman, for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. Your job is a very complicated one at this period. Tell me how you're coping with the complications of having schools in the FCT reopen right now. Coping with the schools in the FCT for now, yes, is very taxing because we need to ensure that every school comply with the guidelines of COVID-19. So that when our, our students come to school, they are safe the school becomes a safe environment for them to learn and to make sure that they don't carry any ailments back to their parents. So all hands are on deck to really ensure that schools, both public and private schools in the Federal Capital Territory, really comply with the laid down guidelines on COVID-19, according to NCDC. You know, we're, going to get, we're going to get into the details of what it is that you have to do immediately. For instance, what's the Federal Capital Territory um, putting in place to ensure that schools comply with these COVID-19 guidelines? What measures are on ground right now for the schools? First of all, what the FCT has put in, um, in place now in the Federal Capital Territory as far as schools reopening is concerned, all schools have been fumigated and the uh, sanitary uh, materials have been provided like soaps, wash, hand washing devices, face masks, face shields, uh, hand sanitizers, all have been provided for the students. Every student has one sanitizer each to him or herself. We have disposable face masks and even the washable ones so that they can use. And then they, we equally advise the parents to really sensitize the, 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 the children or world on how to live a high standard of hygiene. So also in the school, they have been sensitized. We have even trained our staff on how to go by the COVID-19 guidelines or protocols so that the school will be a safe environment for students to stay and learn. It may be easy right now for schools to be compliant, seeing as everyone is watching them. But what plans does your office have for sustainability in the long run? Sustainability, as far as the Federal Capital Territory is concerned, cannot be toyed with. Sustainability must exist in the Federal Capital Territory. But how are you because going to the ensure? Department of Quality Assurance mm -hmm. is really going, going around to ensure that schools complied with the laid down guidelines. So let's talk about that, the, that department. Are they going to be going to schools every day? What's the, what's the modus operandi? How, what, is the, what are the things that are going to be visible that we can use to say, this office is ensuring that schools are compliant in the long run? Yes, yes. They will be going to school from time to time. And I want to let you know that in all the six area councils, we have the quality assurance zonal offices. So those quality assurance departments of each area council with the zonal office will go around the schools within the area council. So it's not an issue of saying only the headquarters moves around the federal capital territory. We have in all the six area councils, we have in Municipal, we have in Kuje, we have in Buari, we have in Guagualada, we have in Kuali, and we have in Abaji. So these offices will make sure they go to schools within their domain, within the area councils. You know, the question that I think is going through my mind right now is the Nigerian factor. You know, we say we start something beautiful, but how do we sustain it? So you're saying that this is going to be happening in all the area councils. Yes. Is there going to be penalties for any area council, for instance, that is not doing uh, the right thing to ensure that there's compliance in the schools that we still have a corruption problem in this country people still take bribes someone can be bribed to look away what are you going to do to ensure that this doesn't happen this is life and death of our children 
you have said it the most important point it is between life and death and i don't think anybody or any staff or any school administrator any student will toy with his or her own life life is very important it is a matter of life and death so collecting bribe that uh, cannot be there because everybody cherish his own life we want to live a, a longer life we want to live a longer life so the quality assurance department is saddled with the responsibility of really ensuring that schools in the federal capital territory both public and private comply with the education policies of the federal capital territory and nigeria as a whole that actually brings me to my next question, which has to do with private schools. We have a lot of private schools in the nation's capital. We're still trying to understand how some schools even exist as schools, schools that don't have playgrounds, schools that are in very tight locations. We're still trying to deal with that. Uh, when it comes to monitoring compliance with the regulations in, during this pandemic, how are we going to ensure, how is your office going to ensure that private schools are doing the right thing? Private schools are not left out in this journey. So I these told offices you, in the, the area councils will also the be to private schools. The offices in the area councils will go to private schools as well as public schools to ensure that schools comply with the laid down rules or guidelines of COVID-19 according to the prescription of NCDC. So they will not be left out. What penalties are you going to give to area schools? Area schools will be closed down. Every school who does not comply with the laid down rules of COVID-19 will be closed down in the federal capital Straight territory. To the point, they'll be shut yes, they will be shut down. And uh, we have put in place, even in our boarding schools, because I know parents will panic. Oh, my child is going to boarding school. I will not be there to take care. I will not be there to monitor. The, the, the parents should feel free. There should be no panic. First of all, we should trust in God and be prayerful and trust in the government and trust in the administration of the federal capital territory. Even students in the boarding schools, in the dining hall, they clean the surfaces of the dining table at every meal before the meals to disinfect the surfaces. So also in the laboratories and in the classrooms and continuous washing of hands. What should parents be looking at right now? For the parents who are scared of sending their kids to school, what word do you have for them right now? Yes, the advice I will have for parents is that they should try as much as possible to cancel their child award. That as you move to school, don't there should be no physical contact, no hugging. I know the excitement will be there when they see themselves after a long period of break they want to hug tell them even in school we tell them don't hug just say hi just say hi hello and when you want to cough do like this if you sneeze do like this don't cough on your palms don't sneeze on your palms because you can transmit the infection thank you so much for speaking with us hajia fatima abdurrahman very 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 trying time really <laughs> yes, for everybody yes, yes well thank you so much thank for the you. work that you do it's my pleasure do you still have questions on the fate of children as they go back to school it's easy for many schools to keep up appearances and claim to be ready when the cameras are on them but when the lights go out you can ensure the schools keep their word how let us know if you've noticed some irregularities in your kids school please let us know you might just be saving millions of lives. We are on Twitter at Dateline Abuja, and we would love to hear from more of you through the social media handles on your screen. Remember to let us know the happenings in your neighborhood. Thank you for watching. I'm Kayla Megwa. See you next time.